Um, there are reports of illegal cluster bombs and vacuum bombs being used by the Russians. Uh, if that's true, what is the next step of this administration, and is there a red line for how much violence uh, will be tolerated against civilians in this manner that's illegal and poten potentially a war crime? It is. It would be. I don't have any confirmation of that. We have seen the reports. Uh, if if that were true, it would potentially be a war crime. Really be a war crime. Really be a war crime. War crime. Remember that? That was last year. And if you've been paying attention to the news in the last week, you might have learned that the U.S. has now sent cluster bombs to Ukraine as part of its imperialist proxy war with Russia. It doesn't make it an easy decision, and I'm not going to stand up here and say it is easy. It's a difficult decision. It's a decision we deferred. It's a decision that required a real hard look at uh, the potential harm to civilians. And when we put all of that together, uh, there was a unanimous recommendation from the national security team, and President Biden ultimately decided in consultation with allies and partners and in consultation with members of Congress to move forward on this step. Cluster bombs, a weapon so horrific that it is banned by over 120 countries, banned because it kills civilians indiscriminately. In other words, a war crime. Now, if you're a logically thinking person, you might be wondering, why is it a war crime for Russia to use cluster bombs? But when the U.S. does, it's a difficult decision. We'll get into that. But let's start with, what are cluster bombs? This is Sufa. He's a nine-year-old boy from the town Kasi Laos. Two years ago, he was playing with his friends when he picked up what he thought was a ball. The ball he picked up to play with was a cluster bomb that had been dropped years before by the U.S. The ball exploded when Sufa touched it. Sufa was seriously injured and scarred, but survived. Two friends he was playing with were killed. Sufa's friends were among the approximately 20,000 people, almost all of them civilians, 45% of them children, who have been killed or injured in Laos by cluster bombs. <laughs> How did those cluster bombs even get there? The U.S. waged a 10-year-long secret war on Laos, where U.S. pilots flew 580,000 bombing attacks on Laos and dropped an average of one plane load of bombs every eight minutes for almost 10 years. When it was over, a total of 2,093,100 tons of bombs Many of them cluster bombs had fallen on the country. The bomb that killed Sufa's friends was one of the estimated 80 million unexploded cluster bombs still in Laos. Cluster bombs are forms of artillery and missiles that drop dozens or hundreds of small bomblets that fall over a wide area. When these bomblets explode, they are very likely to kill anything around. But often, they don't explode. According to the Red Cross, up to 40% fall to the ground without exploding and sit dormant for years and even decades, waiting to be picked up by a child like Sufa. Or like Ali, a little Iraqi boy five years old in this picture being held by his mother Mona. This picture was taken in a hospital in Baghdad on April 17, 2003, one month after the U.S. invaded. Ali and his four brothers were wounded by an unexploded cluster bomb they found in the garden of their home, a gift from the USA. This Iraqi boy is named Hamza. He's six years old in this photo. Here his father is delicately changing his bandages. 
Hamza was one of four siblings who were injured when a cluster bomb exploded on April 26, 2003, while they were playing outside. Two of the children died. Another gift from the USA. The US has dropped cluster bombs on Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Grenada, Libya, Iran, Iraq, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Yemen. Many, if not most of these, carried out by democratic administrations. But it's okay, right? Because the U.S. is doing it. And the U.S. is the good guys. And after all, it's all done in the name of stopping a greater evil. So the bottom line is this. We recognize that cluster munitions create a risk of civilian harm from unexploded ordnance. This is why we've the defer deferred the decision for as long as we could. But there is also a massive risk of civilian harm if Russian troops and tanks roll over Ukrainian positions and take more Ukrainian territory and subjugate more Ukrainian civilians because Ukraine does not have enough artillery. That is intolerable to us. If you swallow these kinds of rationalizations for crimes against humanity, you end up losing your own humanity. And as horrific as cluster bombs are, think about where else this logic can lead. The question has to be asked, what other weapons that have up to now been seen as too atrocious might suddenly not only become acceptable, but necessary, according to the logic of winning the war? And as the U.S. Secretary of Defense put it, administering a strategic defeat to Russia. I want to see Russia uh, uh, weakened. Uh and then think about what's already happened in this war, where the U.S. has drawn a red line and then said it would not send this or that weapon because it would raise the risk of a wider war. Then, after a period of public anguish, goes ahead and sends the weapon in question and then draws a new supposed red line. Think about this pattern and the horrific, terrible, destructive character of these weapons. And then think about the fact that neither Russia or the U.S. has ruled the use of nuclear weapons off the table. And in fact, both of them reserve their right to use nuclear weapons first. Some might say this is realpolitik. This is the situation the Ukrainians are facing. And you have to make tough decisions. But ultimately, the ends justify the means. Well, what are the ends here? The reality is that the war in Ukraine is not a struggle between autocracy and democracy. It is a conflict zone of imperialist rivalry between the U.S. and Western imperialism and Russian imperialism. The Ukrainian people and Ukrainian army are cannon fodder in this war, being used cold-bloodedly to advance U.S. imperialist interests in contention with their Russian rivals. And now, little Ukrainian children will be cannon fodder for generations to come. The means that the U.S. uses are consistent with their imperialist ends, as they have been throughout its whole history. In stark opposition to that, when this system is finally defeated through a revolutionary struggle of millions, its institutions and armed forces abolished and replaced with new revolutionary institutions aiming to overcome all forms of oppression and exploitation and guided by the Constitution for the New Socialist Republic in North America. The People's Security Forces would never under any circumstances, use means that were out of line with our liberating ends. Never use nuclear weapons. Never torture prisoners. Never use weapons of mass destruction like cluster bombs, which kill indiscriminately. And to the people of Ukraine, Russia, the US, and throughout the world, Instead of fighting and dying on behalf of these imperialist gangsters warring for world domination, it's time to recognize our common interests and say hell no 
to fighting in their wars and instead work for revolution, to put an end to this criminal system, a system that causes endless wars, commits one war crime after another, and is holding humanity hostage with the threat of nuclear war and climate catastrophe. And a special wake-up call to the people in this country who are allowing their government to literally maim and murder children for decades to come. Just because this is a continent away does not mean it's okay to ignore this, or worse yet, give your support to what your government is doing. As Bob Avakian has put it, What is called for, and urgently now, is to oppose all imperialist marauders and mass murderers in all systems and relations of oppression and exploitation, while giving particular emphasis to opposing our own imperialist oppressors who commit their monstrous crimes in our name and seek to rally us to support them on the basis of a grotesque American chauvinism, which we must firmly reject and fiercely struggle against. No U.S. NATO war with Russia. Stop U.S. threats against China. No World War III. It's this system, not humanity, that needs to be extinct. We don't accept their future. It's time to get organized for a real revolution.